Hello! If you can see the captain's while I was warning people that I was turning on my screen. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, hello, everybody, and welcome to What's Left of Us. This is our D&D live stream. Um, we have put together, hopefully, uh, a show that you folks will enjoy. This is going to be entirely off the cuff. This is uh, basically a regular old D&D game. The only difference is, of course, you are all watching. Uh, a couple things to get away before I introduce my lovely cast of friends. Uh, first of all, um, some uh, caution warnings as the captions fill up my face. Um, this is this is a game. Uh, this is D and D, so this will be a game primarily centered around mechanics and interpersonal conflicts and such like that. So if you have any problems um viewing that sort of thing or paying attention through that sort of thing uh don't be afraid to click off whenever something really intense happens of course uh and obviously because this is a game uh also centered around the mechanics of combat don't be afraid to pass on if you can't deal with the idea of uh people getting moited and stuff uh, yeah i know right very it's a very technical term uh so release schedule very quickly so you folks can um, can see this stuff here. One second, where are we? There we are. Um, so for anyone wanting, the VODs of this session will be available immediately afterwards for anyone who is subscribed to the channel. Otherwise, you can wait a week, and it will be on our various YouTube pages in some form or another, including our podcast, which you should be able to just ask for in chat, and the bot should give it to you just fine. Uh, speaking of chat, we have our lovely nod uh, pronouns in my bio. They're swinging uh, the great band hammer of justice down there. So uh, pay attention to them. If you have any questions, ask. And if they don't know, they'll be able to ask them. Okay. Now's the time you've been waiting for. <laughs> Call me Sam. Perfect. Beautiful. I'm going to switch on over. Welcome to my party. Uh, from where is this? This side, this side over here. We've got Ron Megaron from Megaron TV. We've got uh, Wild Jinx down below. We've got Star from Starfish Face. Hello. Uh, we've got uh, Mildred from Bot Slime, and we've got Zoe B from the self-titled YouTube page. Hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, this is gonna be us for the next little bit. We're all together, and it's going to be wonderful and or terrifying. That's kind of the point, I believe. Everything is good to go so far. Everything is fine. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm just balancing a little tiny bit of audio. There we go. Thank you very much. It's, uh, man, it's so good to have a team, seriously. It's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, this is our session zero. And for those of you who don't know what a session zero is, basically, before we get started playing a game, we go over our expectations, our safety tools, our um, uh, uh, any alternative rules we want to use. Basically, we set up the way we want to play our game, and we do so in a manner that everyone is sure that um, they're fine with. So everyone knows that everyone else at the table is also on the same page. Sorry, I'm a little distracted. Lots of deluge of information. <laughs> uh, um, and so what I'm going to do very first off is we're going to talk about our safety tools. Um, these are tools that allow us to make sure that we are playing in an environment that is happy and healthy for all of us. Um, so this doesn't necessarily mean that we're uh, taking into account uh, chat switches, for instance. This is to make sure that the table specifically is fine uh, with whatever is going on here. Uh, and so that might have, a, again, with my trigger warnings earlier on, that may have a different meaning uh, for us at the table than it does for you in chat. That is fine. If you can't, uh, if you can't uh, sync up with what we're doing, then, uh, you know, mental, mental care, take care of yourself. 
and dip out for a little bit. Um, so the safety rules that I'm going to start off with, if anyone is familiar with um, the card system, essentially, uh, we're not obviously going to have cards because we're not at the same table together. Uh, but essentially, all of my players have direct access to me via messaging, and or they can just uh, flash up a symbol on the screen if they wish to. Um, we're going to start off with the regular uh, X, right? Uh, again, you can just DM me an X if that's what you wish. It's not a big deal. Uh, but essentially, this is what you flash up whenever you are absolutely not okay with something that's going on, right? If we're doing a scene and there's something in there that I haven't thought of that is just happening, or one of the players is going off on a tangent and I haven't stopped them for some reason, I have no idea why. Uh, then you can flash an X, or you can DM me an X, and we will stop, and we will go from there. My computer is being intensely slow. Camera shy. Okay. Um, that's pretty simple. Most people kind of get that idea. And it could be for anything, too. If you're just not feeling uh, a little bit of the old ultra violence that particular day and you think something is being a little bit too uh, graphic for your liking, you can flash an X, I'll fade to black. No big deal. Okay? As long as everyone's cool with that particular rule. Um, yeah. X means no. Exactly. Exactly. Um. Every once in a while, I'll also make sure to check in to double check that everyone is okay with the scene more or less. So I will either, once again, message in our group chat an O, or I'll just flash an O on screen real quick. You know, everyone okay with this? You all right? And if everyone's okay, they can just answer O back. No problem. And we'll continue. It's like a softer X, really. Like if I'm aware that this scene is a little bit uh, traumatic or uh maybe we're doing something a little bit more personal and there's some tears flowing maybe we need to hold off for a second and we can like pause and do some uh do some waiting for a minute or i can call an early break or something like that yeah uh and then finally um this one is specific to our table um i think just about everybody here has some sort of anxiety uh issue i know i do for sure for sure um if any <laughs> millennials anxiety <laughs> what oh. <laughs> who's ever heard of such a thing no if um <laughs> if we do however uh if it gets to be a little too much because some for some of us this is our very first D, &D game and for some of us this is our very first streamed a lot i think a lot of us is our very first streamed um role play and if it gets so intense that you just can't like it's it's hard to to tell an audience because some some of you obviously haven't streamed before, but a bunch of people watching you while you're having a bit of a breakdown because your character is having a bit of a breakdown, <laughs> that can be intense. So I want everybody at the table to know that if you need to, you can turn off your camera, and it's fine. You should do that if you need to. Right? We won't. None of us will call you out for it. Nothing like that. We'll just keep playing as if everything is normal. That's the whole point, okay? Because you need to... If I might... Uh, it'll be a little harder for me because I'm the DM. But if, if I need, to, if I need to, to not be seen to a bunch of people at once, then, you know, then that's really what I'm... Uh, you know, what I'm, what I'm going for, okay? Um, that's all of the safety tools that I had planned. Simple and easy. I wanted to keep it as small as possible. Uh, but if anyone has any ideas right now for anything, this is the time to speak up. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I I reiterate this. Excellent. Verbal. Oh, Jinx is muted. That's fun. Uh oh. How did that happen? No, there you are. You're talking. My mod. Should we all do like a mic check? Yeah, do a mic check real quick, everybody. 
Hello, hello, this is Zoe B doing a mic check. Beep boop. This is a microphone. Hi, I'm Ron Megaron. Yes. <laughs> you know what's funny? Oh, no, there you are. Okay, it's being odd. Okay, so I want everyone to remember that we did a mic check before we went live here. No problem. <laughs> we we did. did. And it was perfect, by the way. Uh, and Yes, no problem. Mildred, I only have myself to blame because you mentioned when I said we'll do a tech check and everything will be fine. <laughs> and you were absolutely correct. Still can't hear Jinx on the VOD. That's interesting. I can see you, Captain. One moment. Just me? I can hear her. Even when I monitor what's going on. Yeah. Strange. Yeah. The curse of a first stream technical difficulties. Yeah, here, let me turn everybody <laughs> down just a little bit. That'll help. I think. I think. Maybe. Oh, okay, everyone can hear you now. Okay, good. Uh, people may have to refresh. There you go. Perfect. Okay. See, I knew. <laughs> I knew it would bite me in the ass saying that there would be no technical problems. Perfect. No problem. Never expect that. Never expect Never. there to be no technical difficulties. Are you kidding me? That is a recipe for disaster. Yeah, welcome to streaming. Welcome to streaming, indeed. <laughs> The fun technical difficulties are the ones that you don't notice until you're watching the VOD afterwards. It's like, oh no, did I sound like that the whole time? Why didn't anyone tell me? <laughs> Interesting. Okay, give me half a second. I just want to make absolutely sure. I'm going to open up a second page because OBS is telling me that Jinx is coming through just fine. However, OBS is not the king of my sound quality. Uh, that means uh, Jinx gets to talk a lot for a minute. Tell us your life story. <laughs> oh, no. I need to diagnose what's happening. Very succinct. Nice. Oh. <laughs> that is so cool. It's the meme. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think okay, I just refreshed Jinx's page and we'll see how well that works. Do I need to refresh my page too? Uh, I'm not sure. Give me half a second. There she is. Got it. Bingo. Yay. Thanks, Sam. I appreciate Bye. it. Bye. Everyone also thank the mod, Sam, for helping thank you, out. Sam. Uh, thank now you, that you can hear me, thank you. Ron's camera is having a moment. <laughs> Now it wanted it it one problem, problem, and now we have another. <laughs> oh, it looks like my God refreshes the window and messes again. everything else up. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? Everything yeah. is fine. Well, Ron is fine. No, everything seems okay. That's just what Ron looks right. like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, seeing... <laughs> oh, no. Okay. <laughs> oh. oh, no, the glitch is switched. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> it was Okay. It was starting to uh to cycle to go between us. The matrix had us. Okay. 
All right. <laughs> okay, good. All right. Everybody, uh, don't move. Especially the people in chat, don't move. Not a <laughs> muscle. You gotta... <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Uh, where were we? Safety tools. Uh, before anything else happened, I believe no one else had any uh, inputs for... Uh, for any other safety tools that they specifically were worried about. Okay. Now uh, we'll move on to right. some uh, expectations. This part will be a little bit different. We'll be going around the table and everyone will say something specific that um, they more or less expect or not expect to happen. Just to say things out loud. Um, so, for instance, I expect that if things uh, between characters get a little heated, the players will understand that obviously as between characters. And if there's any sort of confusion about that, we go above table real quick. We say, hold up. Someone flashes their X or uh, I, I double check with my O and we go above table. And we talk about it. That's an expectation that I have because of the safety tools I put in. Right. Um, uh, another expectation that I've got is that uh, I don't mind. Obviously, with Jinx crocheting, it's a good idea to, to let everybody know that I have no problems with anyone at the table um, fiddling or or or. Um, Hell, even uh, like looking up D and D stats and stuff like that while they're playing, I don't have a problem with that. You know, they should, you know, absolutely uh, do what they need to to to, to keep themselves um, calmed. You know, so that doesn't bother me at all, especially because like my light's going like crazy underneath my desk right now. <laughs> I'm um, so glad that I have something to do with my hands right now. Otherwise, I would be also going crazy. Yeah, I have um, a fidget cube, and it's going to get some mileage out of this. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, I have so uh, many sensory toys around me. I got this big the on 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 brand. I got this big slime ball. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. that looks so fun. Oh, it feels so good. <laughs> I have my what I call my thinking sand, which is just kinetic sand that I just play with. Thank you. While so I mean. think. <laughs> yeah. Thinking sand, I love it. And I just have I, a stress I ball because have... that's just that's how I roll. <laughs> I, I got a big bottle of cum. That's. <laughs> Just, just, just shades it. Just, I got a rock. <laughs> I, got, I got a rock. Damn it! That was I... my chance. <laughs> I lost it. Do you have a rock? With you? I... Do I? No, I have. I have a. Go a outside. Cube. I have a board cube that. Yeah, touch grass. Get, get a rock. <laughs> I have. Uh, I have a board cube that yeah. lights up. Hell yeah! It's speaking in tongues. It's doing a thing. Okay. Um, another expectation that I've got. Uh, sorry, I'm laying down mine specifically because then you guys might have less to to talk about. Uh, um, uh, romance. I'm cool with it. Um, I fade to black generally. I don't. Well, first of all, everyone should fade to black. This is Twitch. This is TOS. Um, right. But in terms of in terms of like, if you want to have like a relationship with an NPC or each other, I don't particularly have a problem with that, provided everyone obviously consents. Um, and we're not gonna do any of that gross stuff. But there goes the safety tools again, right? We have fallback for that sort of things as well. Like I said, I don't have a problem with it. But if you any of you folks do as well, like that's something you should lay out now. That's important. And then uh, death, character death. Um. I like to make sure that if there's the possibility of character death that I warn people ahead of time above the table. I know that takes away some of the mystique of things sometimes. Um, but if it's not generally clear, like in a combat situation, pretty clear somebody can die, right? But if we're in some sort of situation where like you guys go dungeon delving or something, and there's a chance you could stick your hand in a random hole and lose your character. I think I should probably warn you guys about that. I don't like that's old, really old school D and D stuff, and I don't appreciate it in general. Um, also, you should know that for the first little bit of a character's existence, so like probably the first three levels or so, um, character death will not be happening, as in it will not be permanent if it happens. There will be conceits. Right, And I do this mostly because it really sucks to make a character at level one and then to lose them before you really get to know them. So if anything happens that is really intense and you're worried about your character dying, 
there will be a conceit that feels good in the story, and if it doesn't, you can talk to me about that, and we'll make sure it feels good. I want your death to feel good. That's all I want. Uh... That's all I want. You and me both. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's start with um, let's start with some expectations from Ron's corner, and we'll work our way around. Um, I'm just kind of gonna do the cop out thing. I expect to have a good time with all of my new friends, and you know, hang out and have fun. Yay! Yay. That's pretty much it. Like, <laughs> yes. Uh, all right then, Jinx. Um, are we like supposed to list something that like specifically triggers stuff? that we do not want to happen in the story? Yeah, this will be a good time for that. Okay, well, you already know this, but for everybody else, I really don't like aliens or the thought of them. I, I'm i okay with, like, things from space, like if there's, like a, like, a meteor or a chunk of rock that comes down to Earth and it's like, oh, it's got magical powers for whatever reason and we want to use it to make a weapon or something. Like, I'm okay with that, but just, like, anything like super unnatural i'm like really not okay with right uh and that's big space deedly bopper style yeah. yeah like like et kind of aliens mm. Luckily, that freaked me out as a child and that's why i don't yeah. like them not a whole lot of that <laughs> okay no. well it's my first time playing so i have no idea and i just want to make everything clear but yeah that's that's all I got. Yeah. And I want to have fun too. <laughs> yeah, that too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Star. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think pretty much everything I would say has kind of already been covered. Um, fade to black for like, ro like raunchy romance scenes, I guess it's kind of like going to be my biggest <laughs> thing because not super into that. Um, but, uh, I would also like to have fun, just obligatory answer there. Um, I've, I've been the forever DM of my group, um, so I've never actually played in a campaign before, so I'm, I'm excited mm -hmm. about it. I will try to keep my metagaming to a minimum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Mildo. I'm good. I wouldn't worry about me. I mean, I'm, I'm a little right. worried. <laughs> you, you you made some about failed <laughs> improvisational threats earlier and i just <laughs> oh, whoa, oh no no sorry sorry don't worry about me having a bad time obviously worry about how i'm going to ruin the campaign oh, Excellent. <laughs> i am Excellent. here to cause problems <laughs> mm -hmm. i woke up today and chose violence yes mm -hmm. yes we That's all one do. does <laughs> all right zoe yes um this is a very teacher thing that you're doing here, by the way. I appreciate that. Oh, um, yeah. So I think that for me, my expectations are that there is such a thing as like good metagaming. I know metagaming is like boogeyman type thing in the TTRPG space. But I think that like as players, if we do something it's shitty or if our characters need some tweaking uh to fit in with each other i think that we should be able to talk to each other about that like if my character is super annoying please tell me and i can change things and it's fine like i'm i'm willing to do that kind of thing um that's my full answer that's where the sentence is going to stop oh. <laughs> uh yeah absolutely i like i said a little bit earlier with the distractions thing I don't have a problem with anyone on the table, for instance, looking up the stats of a monster you're fighting, because I tend to change all those stats anyway. Um, but yeah, if you're um, uh, if if we're having issues with uh, the way a character is being played or something like that, I don't think anyone that, first of all, I gathered this crew here because uh, I trust everybody at the table, and if I didn't, no one would be here. So um, if anyone has an issue with anyone else's character, that's what the, our safety tools are for. And of course, if there needs to be a more extended discussion, we'll make it off of camera. So that'll be we'll, something we'll do at break or after, after the stream or something like that. Uh, okay. Oh, speaking of Master Stream, you know what I forgot to talk about earlier <laughs> in, in my welcome to the stream intro part? 
stick around after the session and we're going to have a table talk. So gather your questions. Yes, gather your questions and we will um we will definitely uh uh be answering some of those immediately after the stream. We're going to take a small break and then we're going to like maybe 15 20 minutes and then we're going to come back afterwards and discuss the session uh with while answering your questions for about half an hour or so. So be ready for that. Okay. I think that was that. That's expectations done. The very last thing we got to do before we really situate our characters is alternate rules. Okay. Now there are a bunch of house rules that people generally uh use as a matter of course. One that I use for instance is um health potions are a bonus action to use instead of an action. Usually um using an item is um all right, one second. My wife is asking if I need coffee and the answer is yes. <laughs> Um so, <laughs> um so usually uh using an item is an action, but that can be really restrictive in combat when you don't have a dedicated healer, for instance. And so using um using a health potion on yourself is a bonus action. Using it on another player will be an action because you're aiding them, right? Uh I think that's my big one that I usually use. I also tend to use feats. I allow you folks to take feats whenever you want instead of just the, because feats are an optional rule in 5e now. Um, and I also tend to use flanking as a rule because it just makes sense in general, which is if you're directly 180 degrees from an ally and there's an enemy sandwich between you two, you guys give each other advantage on attacking. It's a fun little rule I like to use. Um, Aside from those two, there's only two other rules that I was considering for this campaign, but I'm only considering, and generally they make life harder for you guys. So we're going to talk about them, and you can absolutely say no. If any one of you says no, we're not going to use these because this is important that we enjoy the rules we're playing as. Okay, And I said a couple of times that uh, I wanted to try Brutal Long Rest, but I'm really on the fence about it. What Brutal Long Rest does is that unless you take uh, a downtime activity, which takes a week, you don't regain full health when you long rest. You regain everything else, all of your um, all of your magic charges, all of your abilities come back like they normally would for long rest. But instead of taking getting your, your full health back at a long rest, you would get another short rest dice throw, basically, for, for getting health back up. What this normally does is it makes um, it makes you going out and being in a place where you can't just take a week to recharge your batteries as a character uh, a little bit more dangerous. This is entirely an RP decision. The only reason I was interested in doing it is I was interested to see what you folks would do with it. But if none of you think it's fun, then I'm absolutely not going to use it. Everybody, I mean, I think we can like test it maybe because, like, it's not a sure. rule that I'm familiar with. Absolutely. Um, so maybe we could just like try yeah. it out, see what we think, and then later on, yeah. if we decide eh, this isn't really working, we can change it later. Yeah, right. like, I'm I'm scared of it, but that's because I'm a coward. Yeah, and, and <laughs> bad at games. So I think if we test it and it turns out like to add a good level of challenge, then we can keep it around. Perfect. Okay, I, I'm down to, to test things, always. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so if we're cool with testing it out, we're actually probably not going to actually see much use of this for the first level or so, depending on how angry you folks all are, but we'll see how your <laughs> characters do things. Um, the only other one I was thinking of is the downtime level up wherein you don't level up until you spend a downtime activity training into your new abilities. Um, again, this is the same line of thinking as the long rest one, where it just it makes your characters have to actually spend some downtime. Um, but again, all it does really is slow things down a little bit. Um, and that's up to you folks. We're already 
uh, playing kind of slow. So if you don't want to use this one, I'm absolutely down to not use it. I think it's a really interesting rule. I would be down for it. Yeah, okay. Well, then we'll use it the same way we're, okay. we're thinking of the other one, where we'll test it out, yeah? Sounds good. Sounds good. Sure. Now, does anyone else have any cool rules that they would like? Like ones that you're invincible or you can fly all the time or something? Yeah, uh, yeah. I was just going to say, like, uh, we always win, and uh, I I would like to be invincible, please. And <laughs> <laughs> I would like all of my dice rolls to be 20s, please. And <laughs> I would like whenever my character's not on like the screen the for people Kobold to say, King. where's Rath Gerther? What do you think she's doing? <laughs> what's, what's up with Rath Gerther? <laughs> What's, Where's she at? Everybody's what kind of adventure thinking. she's having? <laughs> <I'm wrapped up. laughs> the most interesting people in the world. <laughs> Everyone wants to know. <laughs> Always. <laughs> well, all right. Why don't we at least, I think we've got time before the break. Why don't we at least situate our very first character? As long as everyone's cool with that. We could also take a break right now if people want. I am okay with whatever pace we decide to go at. I'm good to keep going. Yeah? Yeah, let's go. Okay. I am going to direct you all to your Tailspire. Wow, it finished updating. <laughs> and I'm also going to actually turn on the sound. <gasps> Whoa. So environmental. Right. Hey, uh, game. WTF, mate. <laughs> Are you camera shy? Is there more technical yeah. difficulties? Nope. Uh, technical difficulties. Hey, technical look at that. Difficult. Hey, there we go. There we go. Beautiful. My green screen's freaking out a little bit, but it's fine. All right. So, I give you all the majestic town of Loudwater. Loudwater... Ooh. Well, at least part of it anyway. I built all this uh, using a lot of assets that a bunch of people helped me with. <laughs> Very nice. Loudwater is a rich town. It is uh, one of those really bougie places that uh, a bunch of rich folk moved to that was originally a small country town. And then they just kind of built it up and it's only for them now. Um, it's called the, the Town of a Thousand Grottos. Uh, because it's mostly built in the foothills of the mountains nearby. And a lot of those hills themselves are hollow, filled with these little grottos that you'll be seeing on the screen in a moment. There is a problem in Loudwater, and that is that it has been so long under the control of people who are very wealthy that people who are not at all wealthy just don't live here anymore. Much of their regular um, stuff like garbage takeout and uh, food prep is done by automatons. That said, there are people that most of the population of Loudwater consider poor, and those are generally shop owners. Uh, and so that is about the extent of things. Now the problem is, of course, that as the town gets more and more rich folk, they want more and more poor folk to look after them. And so, there is an invention in Loudwater. Something to draw crowds. Something that will hopefully revolutionize travel. It's very expensive. And right now, it goes from Loudwater to Waterdeep. And it's about to make its maiden voyage. It's called the Chariot. And it is a wheeled tracked carriage. It is run primarily on steam using a captive's fire spirit, a lot like airships are in this world. And each and every one of you have a ticket to ride. Now, how you got that ticket is something we will be talking about today. But by the end of today, you'll be ready to board. So let's start with our lost child. Tim. Yes. <laughs> Why don't you describe yourself? Sure. 
So Tim is a gnomish girl. Uh, as all gnomes are, she is very small. She's like three feet tall. And she has this shaggy brown hair and this big long jacket that has patches all over it. She looks kind of like a mess. Um, she has like paint smears on her skin. Like she's a hot mess. Um, and she has this big leather messenger bag that is just like bulky like not sure what's in it looks like there's a bunch of wild stuff in there um is there anything else that i need to, to describe her she because she's currently in this town um terrified uh super wide eyes super like oh my gosh i don't know what is going on around me so what is going on around her? Where is she yeah. currently? You have entered Loudwater from the south. Mm -hmm. um, it has taken you a couple of hours to walk here from your compound and then hidden in the, <laughs> the small nooks and crannies of the foothills around here, between here and the high forest. The... Gotcha. Um... It was an easy walk, but it was a little bit hard for you. I don't think you've ever trekked over open terrain before. You've either been in your compound, or you've uh, been in the forest that's very nearby. Yep. Um, but this was the only place, well, actually not the only place, but pretty near the only place your parents ever talked about stopping by should an emergency need to be dealt with. They said they often stopped by here to get caravans to Waterdeep, which is the only other place you know of, aside from what you've read in your books, of course. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you're here to find clues. Yes. You know they had a contact here, mm -hmm. but it's been a while. Mm -hmm. I don't know where to begin. Right. Well, on the road you're on, heading mm -hmm. northward, you see the gate to um, the Gold Quarter. Mm -hmm. which is the wealthy district up top. And you see off to the west, thank you. Um, you see what looks to be um, a place for uh, the quote-unquote average folk to be living, uh, including uh, an open pavilion market square type area. Ooh. Does it look like there's stuff? There is definitely stuff going on. You hear sounds and commotion. Oh, I would like to go towards the stuff, please. You can absolutely go towards the stuff. Yeah, what? there she goes. <laughs> <laughs> is that okay that I'm, yeah, that I'm just you can, you flinging can her? Okay. around and plop her around. Okay. You can also, if you want to, you can also move with the arrow key. But, uh, just, uh, oh, I can. There we are. Yeah, this, absolutely. That'll, that'll this be application is so by, cool. By I am, grid. This is very cool. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you all see right. uh, an open market stall, vegetables, wares all over the place. Um, you see uh, a vegetable cart uh, tended to by a, uh, a tabaxi. Uh, you see um, another vegetable cart tended to by some sort of automaton. Um, you see uh, uh, an area over here tended to by a couple of what look like fish folk that don't have anything on their on their <laughs> table at all. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe they don't get the idea of what, what goes on in a market, but they're here, and they're happy, uh, apparently. And then you've got um, what seem to be a whole tray of spices with some sort of traveling uh, uh, merchant. Sure. Um, well, I don't know that there's anything here that is sort of the kind of thing that I'm looking for. Would I, would I remember where in here the, the shop or the, the place that my parents went yeah there was a blacksmith that they used to freak sure uh, but of course but as I... per usual they didn't tell you much about them right sure um well then i will go up to the tabaxi let's say not jump on her vegetable stand there we go uh that's the automaton actually oh this you see an, uh, an automaton that is clearly made out of wood actually <laughs> Oh, I uh, see. Yes, the I had to zoom in a little bit to to yeah. see what it actually looked like. Okay. Hi. Uh, hello. 
You're very cool looking. Thank you. I've never seen like a, a, a cat person before. That's like, where are you from? I am from uh, a little bit farther north. Oh, I, wow. uh, I'm, I'm sorry, are you here to buy? Oh, I, no, I, do you know where the, the blacksmith is? Uh, oh yes, you take that little, um, there's a little boat off by the river behind me and it takes you into the grotto. It's, okay. Okay, thanks, can I have some fruit? Or, or vegetables? Uh, what are what are what are these? Yes, these are tomatoes. Oh, can I have uh, one? It, they they cost a copper each. If you have any. I, I. I. No, can I have one like for free? Make a persuasion check, I guess. <laughs> oh gosh! Oh no! First, first roll of the game. game. First roll. First, first roll. roll of the okay. game. Oh no! How do I un? <sighs> It's telling me to. Oh, I also rolled. I rolled two d20s on accident. That's Let me retry. Let me. The stuff. Okay, a sixteen that's, is the. That's what you rolled. Yeah. Do you have your? Um, can I? I, don't, can, I would, how do I put them back? Um, you can <laughs> write them on them. You can write them oh. on them and, and clear them. Okay. There we go. So the real roll was a sixteen plus, not much actually minus. Oh no. What are we doing? Persuasion performance. Persuasion, yeah. Mm -hmm. Minus, uh, three. Minus three. Minus three. Oh no. Thirteen. <laughs> Thirteen. Oh, Minus three. Correct. And and she she goes. Eh, I am sorry, little one, but uh, this is how I make my living. I I have to have money to survive here. You don't just like. What? I don't understand. What do you mean? You have to survive? I, don't you like have a house? I do. Yes. Oh. Okay, and you can grow food, so like what's... I don't understand. Uh, the money helps me. There are taxes to pay in, in Love yeah. Brother. What is that? It's where... I'm, I'm sorry, is this... Well, you know what, I'm not actually busy. Do you know about taxes? Because there's a I, long I history. have never heard that. I have never heard that word before in my life. It's, it's it's a fee you pay to live in a certain place. It pays for ostensibly services, although in Loudwater it just pays for my ability to stay here. I, so like, but like, who who are you paying? Where the does mayor. it go? The, 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 the mayor. Town's coffers. Yes. Yes. Oh. Hmm. And what does the mayor spend it on? Um. Usually road improvements in Gold Town. Oh, that makes sense. So, do I need to pay taxes? I I don't live here, if you but like the roads here, are nice. You will need to. Oh, okay. If you're well, visiting, I don't then no. Okay. Um. Well, I don't have any money, but well, I do have some cool rocks. Do you want to <laughs> see one? Would that? Can I? <laughs> okay. Uh, you have opened up the option of having another persuasion check for that. Oh no. That is that is something you can do because that was way too cute for me not to let that have a happen. Oh well that's eleven. Mm. Eleven. <laughs> eleven. Listen, you're very cute, but uh I'm so sorry I can't. Oh uh oh gosh, what else would she even have? Um so she's it's gonna it's take it's out a rock out of her bag and using her skills she has a skill where she can make any tiny item, like have cool little properties. And so what she's gonna do is pull out this rock and rub a little bit of her special paint on it and like just hold it real hard and imagine what it is that she wants it to do. And it's going to, I think I can make things have light. It's gonna glow this like cute, uh, what color is the the clothing that the tabaxi is wearing? Um, she is wearing this sort of like uh, beige and green ensemble. Okay, then I will make it glow the same color green that she has on her clothes, and just like hold it out. Like, it, what about now? See how cool this is? That's, it's like the coolest rock. That's actually, that's that's not bad actually. You can just make huh? those. Yeah. Those would sell so well. But I don't have to pay taxes. That's 
that's true. <laughs> uh, what would you what would you like? What would you like to eat? Oh, so you have tomatoes and you have what else do you have? I have some carrots. I also have some garlic, oh. although I don't suggest you eat that raw. Um, unless you are <laughs> sick. Why? Uh, it uh, is strong. Uh, generally, oh. only kobolds tend to eat things so strong. Maybe dwarves. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, well, I'll have. Yeah, can I can I just have a couple tomatoes? You can absolutely here, oh. and she she gives you uh, five wrapped in a paper. Oh no! Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'll stick four of them in my bag, and then just like straight up, just eat it like an apple. Uh, bite into one of them and be like, oh, uh, okay, okay, thanks. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go find the blacksmith." Uh, so you said which which direction in the the little uh, boat? Directly behind me. Oh, right. On okay. the shore, there is a boat tethered, and it will take you into the grotto. Okay, thanks. Bye. Oh wait, what's your name? I forgot. Uh, I always forget that other people have names. I I am I am Lura. Lura. Oh, that's a very pretty name. Okay, bye. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> and off she and, starts. Yep, okay. we're gonna go over to the boat. Righteous, there you go. If you're going a long way, you can absolutely. If, if it's the easy, oh, I like you this. Can drink it, you like it? Okay. <laughs> now, in order for me to actually move this boat, would take a lot, so I'm not okay. going to. You're gonna have to use our our imaginations for this part. <laughs> Everybody in chat. I don't chat, have one of those. <laughs> imagine really, really hard that the boat is moving forward. So I'm going okay. in this, this underwater area, like yeah, over here. Yeah, you're going to be. Yeah, you're gonna tether up somewhere on this side here uh one side or the other see. it's up to you okay. yes uh don't forget you can lower the green tab on your upper right and it'll it'll take away certain things so for instance right next to yourself you're seeing the tall buildings of the interior of this grotto uh there is one large one right next to you with a sign that says necromancer and then there is a okay. uh, there is one across the way which is a uh <laughs> <laughs> it is a uh, blacksmith um, uh, called uh, World's Best. So it's... Okay. And then, of course, um... uh, d the big thing dominating this view uh, with a gate guarding it is this beautiful, like, open-air pavilion almost. Um, mm -hmm. It looks like an important building. There's no okay. one in currently. Um, well, so I can see the blacksmith from where I am? Yeah, it's it's off to your uh, it's off to your right. It's the other building on the other side of the river that you were just near. Oh, so it's uh, like on the across the bridge. Correct. Yes. Come on. Sorry, I'm getting used to the controls. Here That's we go. Quite oh, fine. Over here. Work. And oh. we'll go over here, and I will lower the gradient so you folks can see the inner workings. There we are. Uh, and yeah, you you're assaulted instantly um, as soon as you get close by uh, by a smell. It is, um, you've actually okay. smelled it before. It is, it's the smell of, of a spell working very, very hard. Um, mm. So it, it's like that ozone-y sort of tinge to it. Um, nice. And there are two automatons manning the front bench, which is loaded with uh, weapons and, and various uh, implements of all sorts, all very fancy, nothing, no farm implements. Um, mm -hmm. the, the smallest instrument implements are things like nose hair trimmers and and fancy uh, fancy like mustache trimmer, um, you know, uh, scissors cool. and that sort of stuff. Uh, but yeah. Um. Well, can I tell like which of the automatons is like in charge? Is there somebody in charge? There, if you if you're looking further in, there does seem to be a a living person on the inside Ooh. here. Okay. Well, then I will head that way. As soon go... as you cross the line that you just crossed, uh -huh. suddenly you hear the, the ting, ting, <gasps> ting, and all these, like, uh, roaring fire sounds, and you're assaulted by, like, a wave of heat from the furnace, and, like, the, it, the air smells sooty in a way that it didn't just outside the pavilion. It's good. It's a good mm -hmm. smell. Right. I just... <sighs> I'm gonna walk up to this person. Hi. Ah, yes. Hello, little person. How are you? I. Oh, that's rude. Well, you're quite I, small. I. Well, which, which should I just call you, big person? 
if you would like. It's a little gauche, but <laughs> as you can see, okay. I am full. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, you don't need to like rub it in. So, do you know Ada and Julius? They're Ada. also like me. Do you Julius. remember them? From, like uh, I don't know, like twelve years ago, or give or give or take. They're also your son. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought you were a, a very small child. No. Are you? I am. I am thirty-two years old. Oh, pardon me. I'm very sorry. Uh, that would mean you are uh, of the gnomish people, I assume? I, yes. And you are looking obviously. for more gnomes, correct? I apologize. I need yes. to be succinct for my records. And you see that there is there's an automaton like nearby taking notes, mm -hmm. like nice. just on this thing over here. And there's a big book that looks like a ledger. Ah, oh, okay. So, do you remember them? Uh, not off the top of my head, no. But I can certainly check. Oh, three, uh, double check for me. Gnomish patrons, uh, interested in, sorry, what were they buying? Do you remember? Oh, I don't know. They never let me, like, I, I was never there when they were, like, doing business stuff. So I, I don't know. Um, but probably, like, lots of, like, metal and, because they were also, like, they did this kind of stuff, too, where they were making, like, magic stuff. Um, so whatever other magic stuff you use to make more magic stuff um o o 3 check under um uh, sundries if you wouldn't mind uh check for gnomish uh inventors under the inventors page please it takes probably about five seconds you see the automaton quickly cycle through things and then spin on its axis without turning its lower axis and yes. uh and not an ascent excellent uh yes those two are indeed in our books do you know where they are? It, no, they made some purchases. Uh, let me let me look at my book. One moment. Uh, and they go off to consult their book, and you notice that the the automaton at the the smeltery over here in the corner mm -hmm. like sneaks a peek at you. Just 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 like turns in its head a little bit and looks at you real quick before looking back while its while its owner is obviously not paying attention. Yeah, so while while she's over there doing that, I'm gonna go uh talk to the go see the, the automaton that, that peeked at me. That'd be this little gem right here. Hi. I'm gonna like tap on a, the metal to like like ting ting ting. Yeah. It's a Hi. it's a fully brass automaton. Oh. Uh, and uh it uh, it's you can see like it's trying really hard to not pay attention to you. Like it, you can see it like it twitches a little bit in your direction when you tap it, but it just it, it tries to go back and and resume its mechanical workings for the most part. Hi, can I can I like look inside your body, please? <gasps> I just wanna I wanna see how it works. This is like this like shots it into the looking right around. <laughs> Excuse me. How do you work? How does it? Because you're like a I'm machine, but like, how does that? How does it work? No, but I'm not really a customer. I'm not going to buy anything. I'm just looking for my parents. Oh no! Don't don't say don't say not going to buy anything. Don't let Master hear that. Oh, I don't. I think I think that she already doesn't like me. I don't know that I can make anything worse. I, I, I indeed. And this, at this point, you hear the the cane tapping along the, oh, the ground. Oh no. As, as the owner comes back here, and the, the commandant like immediately moves back to what it was doing. Uh, he, hmm. I apologize. Was O2 bothering you? Oh well, he wouldn't let me look inside of him. But other than that, he was very nice. Oh, well, that's fine. I can actually give you some schematics if you'd like. Oh yes. They're a rather old model. Oh, I don't care. Perfect. Uh. Let's see here. Your, it says here your family was here earlier so that uh, they could make a purchase order before moving on to Waterdeep. Okay. And how long ago was this? Uh, it looks, by my records, to be roughly ten years ago. <sighs> okay. Have you not seen them in that long? Their trip was supposed to be very quick, they said. Well, so... The <laughs> 
they told me that if anybody ever came to the tower to not tell them that they weren't there because then they would like come in and try to like abduct me um but it's been like 12 years so i think i'm allowed to say that they no they are not there interesting well that's very unfortunate yes um okay so can i have the schematics and then go uh absolutely why don't you follow me to the front here okay um, and they pull out um what looks to be a wand or something from their person and uh wave it real quick and a bag appears on their belt and then they open that bag oh. and out they pull out this big like sheaf of paper wow now this is a copy you understand but it would still cost uh, a fair amount i imagine given that it's a schematic I, of my own you have to pay taxes too um <laughs> Hey, yes, I am a store does every, owner. Does everybody in this town have to pay? Do the automatons pay taxes? Do children uh, pay taxes? N no, I pay a tax for my automatons. You pay for them. Yes. Hmm. They are my wards. You see, I maintain them and I make sure they are in a good operating order. So, like, if I pretended to be an automaton, I wouldn't have to pay taxes. It, it would have to be a very good performance, but yes, I imagine okay. so. I bet I can do that. I'm really good at, like, talking to people. <laughs> See, I, I can understand that. Yeah. Um, so this schematic mm -hmm. would be about 10 gold. 10 gold. Yes. It is um, an old schematic. Not very expensive, I know. But uh, I, I'm sure you'll, apologize, you'll uh, forgive me for pricing it so low. I have four of the tastiest tomatoes you will ever find <laughs> this side of Waterdeep. Uh, really? <laughs> tomatoes, you say? Yes. And you see them I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pull one out of my bag and kind of like... I'm gonna... Huh? I'm gonna let you make a perception uh, check. <laughs> oh no! I'm so That's what Here we go. Oh my god. Oh, oh, it flew away. That's not so bad. minus three is 14. Okay. Um, and you see that um, <laughs> the shopkeep was like reaching for something under the table and then like stops and goes, it's fine. It's quite. No, I'm afraid I cannot uh, trade for tomatoes. Uh, do you have anything else for trade? Something magical might do considering... Uh, that this is merely a mundane schematic. I mean, I, I don't... Nothing that that I I'm, I want to give away. I... Are you, are you sure I can't just have it? Because I'm, I'm looking for my parents. I mean, look at me. I'm so little. <laughs> okay. All right. You know what? I'll give you another one. And this no! one will be an advantage for a specific reason that you don't know. <sighs> you managed to trigger something specific. Nope. <laughs> that oh. is an 11 minus oh, 3, which a, is an 8. The, <laughs> the best I can do is give it away for 5 gold. And that would be giving it away. Okay, I will find some stuff and then come back okay so, so don't forget that i'm that i need that absolutely and okay. he, they um they they tap the roll on the desk and just as a as a, as a sim like a yes absolutely and then they stuff it back in their bag um and you notice because your passive perception is high enough that a little sheaf of paper falls out as they tap it and it falls out like forward and directly Ooh. down in front of you, so they don't they didn't notice at all. I'm gonna like scoot my my toe forward a little bit and just kind of like step on it, um, and like wait for them to to turn around and go back to whatever they were doing. Right, um, and so they they uh, they immediately leave. Like they just kind of like move off from where mm -hmm. they were. I just tried to grab the model on my OBS screen instead of my. <laughs> <laughs> Reach in <laughs> and grab. Reach in and grab. And like they, they, they go off this way to be terrible to their automatons again, like usual. Um, and now just the automatons are watching and they don't seem to be too interested in what you're doing. 
Well, I'm gonna reach down and, and grab it and just kind of hold it in my hand and run out of the out of the building. Absolutely. Oh, not that way. Not that way, though. Yes. There you go. <laughs> that, that would be into the water. Yes. Um, so yes, there you are, and in your hand, you're holding mm-hmm. what appears to be a ticket. <gasps> it says for transfer to Waterdeep, maiden voyage of the chariot. Hmm. I bet I could sell this for five gold. <laughs> um all right i'm gonna i am trying to figure out how i can get those schematics i'm gonna run into the nearest building and talk to whoever's there or if you want to move sure. to the next character that's that's also fine uh well let's do a pause here because it is now okay. uh three Three o'clock, a little bit after three o'clock, and we are going to have a little bit of a break. So I'm going to put on the break screen, and we are going to get up and stand up and do our bio breaks and grab more water and all stuff like that. And then when we come back, we are going to transition to a different character. Awesome. But that was Tim, everybody. Yay. Yes, that was Tim. <laughs> we'll be right back. Nice. And we're back. Hopefully everything is still good and not broken. I appreciate all of that. It looks <laughs> like we're fine. Perfect. I hope everyone had a good break. You all should have gotten up and gotten something to drink as well. It has already been an hour. Oh, God. All right. So. We are going to jump very quickly over to... Oh, who would be next, I wonder. You know, let me roll for it this time. I chose Tim <laughs> first because uh, I felt the fish out of water would be a good uh, a good one. <laughs> fish out of water? What, you uh, mean not understanding taxes is a... <laughs> is a... Is a useful one, yeah. Fantasy taxes. I'm so glad right. those don't exist in the real world. <laughs> uh, by yeah. strange coincidence, we are going to be going in to Necromancer. <gasps> I mean, our next Ooh. character, Vernon. Vernon. Mm, I had have... a feeling it was going to be me. Absolutely. You have been living in Loudwater for um, very close to a year now uh, at the house of your grandmother. Um, yes. After, unfortunately, your estranged father's demise. That was never solved, strangely. Uh, you yes, run very a business. That's called Necromancer, where you make most fine and excellent scarves and uh, accoutrements for one's uh, upper appendage. Uh, yes, indeed. Live, indeed, I do. You own it, which is, well, technically, Granny owns it, but, you know. Um, On paper. Yeah. And let's see. Now that we're inside the building, you have just finished selling one of your quote-unquote finest scarves to a customer, and they have just left. Mm -hmm. Very shortly, you plan on embarking to Waterdeep for a bunch of supplies. Uh, It was Granny's idea that you go to Waterdeep to get some experience in that town because you actually haven't been there before, which is weird for you. You have traveled a lot of places but not water deep. Yes. The... And you were extremely lucky to buy yourself onto this new contraption heading to water deep at half the time. You're pretty sure Granny's going to be thrilled about this. But you haven't nice. told her yet. Um, mm. And just at that moment, in fact, you hear the tapping of her cane as she's coming down the stairs. Oh, good. Here comes the old woman now. I'm going to uh, grab her. Hey, uh, no, no, I'm gonna, I have to listen to you. I'm gonna teleport you. <laughs> Hang on a second. <laughs> Don't pay no attention to the man beyond the curtain. Okay. Uh, yes, and exactly. she, she's on here and she's she's bowed a little bit. She's wearing uh, a very uh, conservative dress. Like it has very little, um, uh, very little accoutrements on it. Most people get like um, an embroidery done on their dresses. That's very common for this time period. Um, 
Mm -hmm. But she's wearing a sort of flowy, drapey uh, thing with like a, uh, what's called a babette, which is like a little tiny uh, circle on the top of her head. And it's got like a, it's pinned in place with a strap around her, around her neck. And she's a little, a little tiny hobbled with a cane. And she goes, uh, my grandson, you did not hear the bell. I need a little bit of assistance upstairs, please. A little bit of assistance, you say? What now? Uh, please, just I upstairs, if you will. Okay. okay but what? I am up, so it's better be quick. That is fine. I'm After all, we did just sell this, this scarf and... Yes. Us. My goodness, as I soon... had the things that... Oh, yeah, it's a little bit wonky when you go upstairs. Um, as <laughs> soon as you guys are in your are in private, she stands straight up, tosses the cane to the side derisively, and turns on you. You know how much I hate going downstairs and pretending to be a crippled old woman. Don't make me do that again. If you hear the bell, I need your aid. You understand? Yes, grandmother. And you can stop calling me that anyway. while we're up here anyway. Fair enough. Although you do look the part. Well, I am old, I'm afraid. Yes, How is time your preparations is all. for your trip? Preparations are going very well. In fact, there is uh, some very good news. I happened upon this ticket for a uh, new... Uh, what would it be? I suppose it's a new method of transportation over to uh, over to Waterdeep. And we should get there in about half the time that we were anticipating previously. So that we can get more resources quickly. And then I could get back and sell them faster. And then we can make more money. Her mouth flattens into uh, what you have begun to recognize is her um, disappointed look. Um... And she goes, well, at least you will be spending a little bit of time in Waterdeep, which is more than what I can say, but you should have really gone by caravan. You shouldn't be trusting these newfangled uh, adventures. Oh, yes, of course, the caravan. It would take even longer, and we would get, you know, less money, which is kind of the important thing here. I mean, we do have to pay the taxes, and they don't just accept tomatoes or anything like that, so... Vernon. We're doing very well, by the way, so I expect I'm... we'll have to pay a lot in taxes. Vernon, your rags do not pay the cup of this place. I do. But that's beside if the you point. Say so. What I need from you right now is to quickly go over something in the grimoire I have finally uncovered for you. Mm. This yeah, seems to be a, a passage look. that will allow me to decipher even more pages, but I... Honestly, I'm at a bit of a loss. And so, what I would like you to do is while you are in Waterdeep, you are to contact a friend of mine. They are part a of the friend, children. You? Uh, they are a member of the children. And you will mm. be contacting them properly. Do you remember what I told you about contacting the children? Admittedly, I do not. It seemed a rather complicated procedure, if I recall. I know your memory is difficult, but you need to pay attention. This isn't some Zentarim loser you're going to be meeting. This is a true faithful. Do you understand? Understood. You will go, and you will knock thrice on the door that is marked, and you will be asked a question, and your answer will be the crab knocks for thee. Understood. The crab uh, knocks for three. Uh, oh, Excellent. Wow. <laughs> Boy. What? The crab has multiple children. Obviously, it's knocking for two of the, the children that it brought along with it. It makes perfect sense. You do realize that code. you are the only seed I have come across in my many, many years of searching. That's what I understand, but... I don't, I, I don't actually under, understand. If you, if you, if you catch my meaning. You know, your naivete would almost be sweet if I were younger. I well, will mind the shop for the rest of the time not. that you are away. 
but you should be proceeding to the train yard now. Okay, I will go then. Thank you for your assistance with the children. Again. A any anything else? Like, no, child, leave me. <laughs> are, are, she's are she's got sure? that irritated look. <laughs> okay, I don't want to make you too angry. The, the crab knocks th th uh, th twice. Okay, goodbye. And yes, if you if you were wondering, this is your little cubby that you sleep in up here. Oh, <laughs> I see it now. My mm. goodness, not uh, not quite the room I was picturing in my head when I, you know, took over this establishment. But here we are. Well, such is life. All right, what else? What do we have going on in the shop? Hopefully, nobody's come in and pillaged all of my materials. I can't center on my character because <laughs> I am still messing around with this program for basically the first time. Okay. Well, I suppose to the train yard I shall go. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Indeed. As you uh, as you walk outside, open this door for you so you can. <laughs> Wait. Uh, Wait. You almost okay. run head yes. first into a very tiny person. Considering how oh, no. considering how tall you are specifically, incidentally. Uh, there I am. Yeah. Wow. I'm sorry. Blur. <laughs> are we just making noises at each other? Is that what we're doing? Yes. Okay. That that is what we're doing now. Okay. Hi. I, I um, apologize, small child. Know, I almost ran into you. Do you know what I could do with this train ticket? I need five gold. Well, I. <laughs> I I don't know what to really tell. Are you trying to get to water deep? I because yes, the... actually, but I I there's like five steps between here and that because I also need five gold so that I can get this these schematics that were the last things that my parents bought and my parents disappeared and so that's that that's what I need to be doing. Oh, I see. Do you have five gold that well... I can borrow? Sadly, I do not. You see, I have to pay taxes living here, and you know, <laughs> taxes. Yeah, I've heard yes, a lot about those. Yes. That, it doesn't are, like uh... all you get is roads. That doesn't seem what like a that? great Sorry. deal. Yes, you, you well, just get I mean, roads out of it. Well, you know, the the thing about roads is, at, at least it's a stable, you know, walking area. And, right. you know, if you take a caravan, then you don't have to worry about the horses breaking their ankles or something to that effect. I don't really know much about the anatomy of horses, so maybe they don't have ankles. Anyway. Uh, Vernon, if, yeah, it, if it matters to you, um, even though you know that you should be keeping money for taxes, you do hear, like, just granny has this way of like talking to you that you just kind of always just kind of shudder and remember at the right moments and you can hear her in your okay. brain right now going no charity and it's just like every time you've heard that you know she just encourages you to not be charitable and a whole bunch of other things okay so that said no Besides on the my... five gold that is a no however okay. i am feeling a bit charitable me and you know then for, for reasons so i will give you one gold and that is all that i can really spare at the moment so here you are thanks granny and is I disappointed around in me <laughs> granny can be disappointed all she wants she doesn't see me as far as i know so do you do you know where i can get do you know where i can get more money do you know like can i can i come with you if you so choose i do know how to make a fair amount of gold oh, well that's All what we i really need, need to do that is... is what i need all right well then consider yourself under my tutelage i will be happy to assist you in this money-making <laughs> endeavor yes now the first things first we need to go and find a bunch of dead bodies I... uh just from fresh from the battle and uh and then we will pick them clean of all of their clothing. It's kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Here? Gross. Uh, it's very, <laughs> yes, it's very gross. It's very gross, but you can take that clothing and clean it up. 
and and turn it into new clothing that you are can convince of, the people are, around here that it's very very nice. So all of your clothes are dead people clothes. Well, all is a bit generous. <laughs> That's but actually that is actually such a great idea because then I mean those clothes would just go to waste, right? Precisely. Exactly. You need to use as much resources as you can. <laughs> See, so, you're such a good business you know, person. Yes, yes. You know, you know so much about this already. I don't know why you even need me to teach you. Okay, so where are you going? What are you what are you what are you doing? What are we doing? Truth be told, I have not been to the train station before, so I do not know myself exactly where we're going. But you you would I know have an the, idea. the ticket says that it is located by the the inn at in ah. the gold quarter. So okay. it's up, up top. I will follow you. The Q fast travel sequence. Mm -hmm. Um to yes. be confused with the silver quarter. Okay. So oh, how do I? Uh, if you folks want, I can teleport you. I don't know how to get. <laughs> yes. It's quite. It's okay, quite. Sounds don't good. Don't you worry. <laughs> uh, watch. Watch this amazing DM prowess I am about to do here. While I steal your characters, pluck them even, right from the air. Straight oh. out of my control. There you are. If you click on your character <gasps> portraits on the left hand side now, you'll be teleported mm -hmm. right to where you need to be. Boop. Oh, nice. Yes, that would have been a bit of a journey. It would have been. I mean, it was a bit uh, of a journey. Yeah. And we talked about yes, so yes. much stuff while we walked. We're like best I friends know, now. I can't believe. I can't believe that you that you were able to 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 just it's, get tomatoes. It's been <laughs> such a long time since I talked rock. to like a a person. I mean, usually yes. I just talk to like animals and rocks and and mm -hmm. you know imaginary friends and stuff, but. Mm -hmm. I'm not used to people like talking back. It's kind of cool. Sometimes it is good to talk to yourself or your imaginary friends. Yes. Helps you gain some insight. Very quickly as this snowball is building um, and you folks wait your turn to go through the gates here uh, as your pass for the train allows you to go through it. I'm going to snap to another character as your walk to the train yard will be rather uneventful. Who's up next? Thank you, by the way, very much, Vernon, for your entry. And thank you. Oh. All right. Eldred. Or should I say Rathgurther? Rathgurther, yes. Yes. It has been a very long time since you have been in Loudwater, and you're not really sure under what context you were in Loudwater. It doesn't seem like the sort of place you would frequent, but perhaps you know there's a reason you're here. You're not hmm. sure why. Okay. But you've walked from the Desert Valley all the way here on foot, and it's been a long time. Hmm. Let me check my inventory real quick. See how I see what I got gold wise. Sure. Uh, did, did, did. Get this. Uh, none. Okay. Uh, that's the exact answer I was hoping not to uh, see. Yeah, you uh, have 15 gold. I do? Yep. Okay. Uh, in inventory upper right hand side. There's a little tiny, uh, like 15, with a gold symbol on it, right, up, right across from weight carried. What? Where are you seeing this? Uh, this is on your D and D Beyond sheet. Uh, Under inventory, there will be uh, a weight carried, and then directly across from that, on the right hand side, there's a little tiny marker that says fifteen and a little tiny like gold symbol. Okay, whatever. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, I would like to. Who's around? Who do I see? Do I see anyone? Uh, immediately in front of you, you see a marketplace, and mm. to your left, you see what looks to be some sort of uh, village. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's very small, but very repetitive looking. And then up top, as you can see from, from just looking straight ahead of you, you can see some magnificent buildings in the distance on top of this big hill. Do any of them look like they could be an inn? Uh, yeah, actually, a couple of them do. 
Although there okay. looks to be a building that isn't in right to your left across this bridge. All right. Which I'm going to go closer. to that end. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. Oh, my God. That's not what I wanted. Leo, how do you move your guy without dragging them? Um, you can use the arrow keys if you like, and it'll move you but brick I, by brick. This simply moves my camera. Uh, that's that. If you click on your character specifically, and then you uh, move with your arrow keys. I see. Where is oh. this in? That's the end right in front of you. There's a big giant three story in. What? Yeah. There we go. And I will, in fact, even open the door. She's walking this fast, by the way. Absolutely. She's going to trudge right in. Beautiful. You come in and you see um, this place seems to be uh, barely outfitted. It looks extremely new, in fact. Um, there are maybe uh, there's maybe one waiter, two attendants, and the barkeep himself. I uh, I look to the barkeep, and I say, "You there? I oh. shall take a flag in the veil, for I am weary from my travels." Uh, right away, mom. Uh, what kind of air are you looking for? It matters not. I have a thirst that must be quenched. Not just for ale, but for adventure. Right, well, I can handle the ale part. Give me a second. And he goes off and fills a chilled stein and sends it to you. Ah, excellent. How much do I owe you? Oh, uh, a silver piece should do. Very well. And I slide the silver piece across the table. You're well, probably wondering who I am. Uh, slightly, yes. I am the legendary Radgertha, mighty warrior, whose tales you have no doubt heard whispered around many a campfire. Allow me to set the record straight. No, I did not wed the Slug King? Don't know how that rumor gets started. That sounds like quite the pain. <clears throat> oh yes, I have had many adventures. Quite. Well, you're in a good place for it. There's some newfangled invention up in Gold Town. Everyone's talking about it. A newfangled invention, you say? Hmm. Perhaps this will pique my interest. Um, tell me, where might one find this invention? Uh, there's a train yard up in Gould Town, which is the top of that hill over there. But you won't get past the guards without a ticket. Now, I happen to actually been told to hand out coupons like this for just such an occasion, if I can find myself an adventurer or an entertainer who could do something of note on this train. Could you perhaps give me any story about yourself? Well, um, there was the time that the King of Giants sought my hand in marriage. Of course, using my cunning guile, I tricked him into betrothing his own horse. <laughs> his own horse, you say? Indeed. That's quite funny. It was a beautiful ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> uh, were you you were present at the ceremony after tricking him? Yes, of course. That's I wouldn't have missed brave. it for the world. Are they still together? No, I don't think so. I believe it uh, was annulled when it became clear that uh, it was a horse, but I was long gone from town <laughs> at that point. Uh, with a sack of gold for my troubles. <laughs> I I dare say, you know, this train's going to be full of a bunch of wealthy snobs. If you can get any of them to marry any sort of barnyard animal, that's worth the price of admission. And he slides across a sheet of paper, very small, says, Maiden Voyage the Chariot. Hmm. 
I shall take your coupon. Tell me, what animals will be on this newfangled carriage that might be of wedding age? Mostly rich folk. Hmm. They are difficult to finagle often. But I shall do my best. Absolutely. Uh, I, she I, takes I, uh, one sip of ale and she like noticeably winces. And she's like, hmm. Good. Strong. It's, mm. it's called adventure ale. I thought it would be funny. Yes, I love ale. Right. Mm. It's, <laughs> I love, it tastes good and not at all disgusting to me. That's quite clear. I'm glad <laughs> you're, you're talking about it. It's so refreshing to have a customer who, who says out loud what they enjoy. Makes it a whole lot yes. easier for people like me. I am not like most. Indeed. Such a... I think you're gonna do well. I go. I do well everywhere I go, Barkeep. But thank you for your vote of confidence. I like you. I, I mean, I'm rather fond of you myself, and I just met you. Mm. It is wise to remain in the good books of the mighty Rathgerther. Absolutely. You see him, like, writing something down and, like, putting it under his desk for later? Well, though I am kind in temperament, I do have a bit of a temper. I certainly, if you don't mind me saying so, you're dressed in the accoutrements of a barbarian. <laughs> oh, yes, you noticed. Indeed, I have dabbled in barbarianism, as you can no doubt tell from my rough-and-tumble attitude. Yeah, I, yeah, I'd say so. Uh, speaking of rough and tumble, though, you might actually miss the train if you don't leave now. <laughs> the train shall wait for me. That might be true, actually, depending on how long the mayor talks for. Very well. Um, I suppose I won't have time to finish this ale, drat. How inconvenient. Goodbye, barkeep. Certainly. Fairly well. I think she might have been some sort of performer, don't you? <laughs> the door closes. Should be noted that she is dressed in a barbarian outfit, but it is like conspicuously clean and like just fresh off the rack. Absolutely. Uh, I believe your sword is real, though, correct? The sword is real, yes. Yeah. Uh, very well. There is a clear, there is a very easy way to the gold town over here, uh, with a sort of winding path up the side of the uh, of this hill, as you pass all of these homes, uh, and hill. you notice in a very nearby field as you pass by that there are two people engaging in some uh, some what looks to be sort of training swordplay. Excellent form. Um, and as that happens, uh, do you stop, by the way, to watch a little bit, perhaps? Yes. And I, I, uh, I'm making a lot of faces like, hmm, yes, hmm. Right. Good, very, good. Very good. We are going to, uh, step off of Rathgutha for a minute. And, um, Star. Hello. Um, you are currently sparring a little bit with your uh, current fencing instructor, uh, Brother mm -hmm. Leutger. And Brother Leutger is a monk from a nearby convent. Um, and um, he has been teaching you how to use uh, small weapons for um, probably a couple of, uh, maybe a month or two now, off and on, as you leave Loudwater and come back to Loudwater and go out and do things and come back. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you are about to take your very first trip back to Waterdeep and you thought it would be a good time to brush up on some training um, as you have uh, somehow come across uh, a ticket to this uh, miraculous new invention and so you thought it was a good time to check in with him and of course he suggested a little bit of of swordplay of course yeah 
Um, and obviously this this stranger walks up partway through your your uh, your talk, uh, your 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 first bout. But uh, we talk with swords. Yeah, and I mean they're they're, they're being uh, a, a little bit polite by standing off uh, at a fair distance, but they're 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 hemming and hawing dramatically a little bit. Uh, but that's, that's about the. Give it here. I'll, I'll move you over here real quick. There you go. Ah, a stranger um, approaches from the sky. Right. Um, I, <laughs> I'm making an assumption here, but I assume you ignore the stranger for the time being, as your I mean, opponent is still here. Yeah, prob I'll probably like just glance over, like just in the middle of just like swinging swords around, and then just like uh, there's somebody over there. Doesn't matter. I, Bye. I will say that it's going to be very difficult to ignore her. <laughs> She's not going to make that easy. I'm okay. doing my very best. In the meantime, what I want is for you to roll initiative. Oh shit! Okay. Uh, Rathgarther, you're also going to roll initiative, uh, although I don't think you'll be fighting. It'll be mostly for when you can make your comment, uh, as that will be how you are fighting in this particular bout. Um, should I roll in a um, D and D Beyond? Or? You, you oh. can indeed. In fact, I'm going to turn it into turn-based mode, and we're going to. You're going to. What you're going to do is you're going to roll your D20, and you're going to not tell me what it is in it for a minute until I've asked for it. Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, does anyone score anything from 25 to 20? Nope. Did anyone score anything from 20 to 15? Oh, okay. White girl goes first then. Uh, hold Whoa. on. Point. Yeah. Um, did anyone get from 15 to 10? I got 14. Bingo. And that means that unfortunately, poor Raptor. Apply turn over. Okay. So. Brother Leuchter is armed with a short sword that is particularly thin and stabby, and he also has a buckler, but he doesn't wear any armor. He's just wearing his monk's robe. And stepping into a guard, he moves quickly forward and stabs outwards with this particular weapon. Uh, and he's going to roll. Give me half a moment. <laughs> uh, what is your AC, my friend? Uh, 15. 15. Uh, he misses with his first as you parry off to the side, I imagine. Uh, and that will be, uh, he will then spend a key point and pop into patient defense as he oh. steps backwards and points the sword towards you to stop you from charging at him immediately. It is now your turn. Okay, well, I am going to charge him immediately. <laughs> I'm going to make an attack with one of my short swords. Uh, oh, that was only, uh, that's a nine. The nine to hit him? I'm afraid yeah. you also miss. Uh, yeah, I figured. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and do my uh, bonus attack uh, with my second short sword, because I have two of them. Absolutely. And that one is a 21. Oh, that hits. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so then that is, um, ooh, Matt, eight damage. <laughs> eight whole damage. That's pretty good. Um, let's see here. Max to that D Bravo. 1d6 plus 2. Hell yeah. 8 whole damage, you say. Uh, you give mm -hmm. him a, a good, um, you give him a really good strike to his ribs as he wasn't, um, couching enough. And he goes, oh, God. All right, fine then. And then he pulls back and he does another, oh, wait, hold on. That's not his turn yet. I thought he had something big. Uh, wrath with her. It is your turn. Uh, I I would like to give uh, hold on, I have to look up your character's name here. Emery, some yes. bardic inspiration. Oh, dope. Ooh. Uh, don't give up, child! Um, ch child, what? Oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Loiker takes that as, as a chance to, to, to attack you! <laughs> to attack um, me? No, no, attack uh, Emery, pardon me. Using the distraction, as it were, if it even is a distraction. Uh, <laughs> I'm imagining that a 23 will hit you. No, actually, yeah, it does. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> nice. Um, and so uh, he strikes out at you, and you take... Uh, where is my die for this? I should have been more prepared. You take... Uh, you take nine points of damage as he... he oh, that's a lot. <laughs> as he uh, whips... The, the flat of his blade across the side of your face. I only have three of those left. 
<laughs> Level one! God. And he goes, uh, Guard your head, girl. That's why I gave you two messers. Hold one above your head. And now it's your turn. Okay. Um. You have a 1d6 that you can add to any ability check, by the way. Oh, excellent. Um. Oh. I'm going to um, use my second wind nice. um, as a bonus action to get some of that HP back. I need to roll a d10, and it's not giving me the option to just click on it like everything else. That's weird. I guess I can just do it on this. How do I? Yeah. You could. Yeah. Oh, go for it. That's only a two, but okay. Um, so I get two <laughs> plus one is three HP back. I am now at half, which is better. Uh, and then I'm gonna go in with more swords. <laughs> Go in. Sword. Um, go in once. Uh, that's a twelve. That does not hit. His buckler okay. parries off your first strike. Okay. Well, I'm gonna just kind of like try and swing around that, and then go with my second sword. Go second for it. sword doing better today. Uh, that's a fifteen. That also does not hit. Damn it. Rathgarther. Uh. Oh, wait, you could have used your bard of inspiration on any time. Oh, I, 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 yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, could. Yeah, yeah. I could. Can, I, can I do that then? I'm just one of yeah, those. Yeah, your second yeah. hit might do it if you roll well with your bardic. Okay, um, 1d6 for that. And Three. you rolled a 15 originally. Yeah, it's a 2. That just so that's beats it. So you Excellent. hit him again. Nice job. Nice. Um, so that is... Ah, uh, 3. Woo! Hey, every little bit counts. You like smack uh, him with the with the hilt of your sword, and he goes. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> now it's Rathgarther's turn. Uh, I'm going to cast vicious mockery. Ooh. Oh no! On who? <laughs> on uh, the other guy. On the guy. Nope. Uh, this person, brother Lutger. Lutger, yeah. Lutger, uh, and uh, I say. You're slowing down. Perhaps you're getting tired. And that does. Uh, well, I gotta roll the d20. Hold on. Do I? Hold on. Sorry. Uh, you must proceed on a wisdom saving throw. So roll Ooh. a wisdom save. Nope. Okay. Uh, and what is the number to beat? Oh, he rolled real bad. Uh, uh... He rolled a six. I doubt very much Ooh. that that will pass. I don't think it does. My spell save DC, which I know offhand, is 12. So, no. He takes two psychic damage and has disadvantage on his next attack. Oh, bravo. Excellent. Okay. Um, well, it's a good thing he wasn't planning on going for an attack immediately. Is that the end of your turn, by the way, Rathgrither? Indeed. Uh... Being so close in, Loiker wraps his arm around your sword arm and attempts to pull you into some sort of uh, 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 bar of some sort, like, with it. Uh, and he's going to make uh, an athletics check, and if you wish to, you can make either an athletics check or an acrobatics check to oppose. Yes. Well, actually... Get all my actually, acrobatics I think he has disadvantage on better. that anyway, because it still counts as an attack. Oh, well, that's... Well, I got a 17 for acrobatics. Bingo. So, yes, he tries to wrap his buckler arm around yours, but you slip out of it. No problemo. And it is now your turn again. All right. I am just going to just, like, just both hands overhead, just like one each, each sword in a hand, and just wail on him. Whoa. Um, oh, man. Oh, come on! Oh, no, that's a, it's a seven, not a one. <laughs> Uh, so, 11 for the first one. I know that's not going to do it. Um, hmm. And you know what I'm actually going to do? Uh, well... So, I have, like, the, the dual or, like, two-handed fighting, but I, that's an action. So, I've already taken my action, so I can't. I'm just going to hit him with my sword again. Going with Go the other it. sword. Oh, yeah, it's not going to do it either. That's a nine. It's a nine? Gotcha. Yeah. Nine. All right, Raptor. I think uh, she might be getting frustrated at this point, and uh, she's just gonna barge in and attack. Oh my god! <laughs> yes. And go, go no, no, no! This is how you hit someone with a sword. Uh, and she's 
going to attack and let's see here. Does a 14 hit? Or, sorry, a 10 hit. A 10 does not, I'm afraid. This is mm. how you swing a sword, miss. <laughs> of course, in a real battle, you would hit. You would, you, I'm pulling my punches. I don't want to hurt bystanders. Uh huh. Oh, pulling in allies already, eh? I did. I'm not oh. doing shit. Nah, that's smart. All right, let's see what you've got then. And he rolls a one. Miss. <laughs> no one can harm the mighty Wrath Gerther. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he's feeling a little pressed. Emery, now's your chance. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if that, you said that flanking was a thing that we're allowed to do now, right? That is true, if you wish to flank. Yes, I would. I Since my, my dear teacher is distracted, I am going to twirl around back and just become a death blender a la Monster Hunter and just go in sword cross over other sword. Take your advantage. Heck yeah. The first one's a 10 and the second one... The 23! Oh my god, okay, you hit him. You hit him for sure, for sure. Alright, so that first one is a 4 damage. Okay. And then I'm gonna go with my second sword! Um, do I get advantage on both of them? Yeah, you do. As long as you're in flanking. 9. Okay, so the second one is a 15. 15, unfortunately, does not hit. Dang it. You caught up to uh, me. Yep. Uh... Rathgerther, you also notice that you have the advantage of sandwiching your opponent. Go finish now, old man. Uh, you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can ever imagine. 18. <laughs> An 18 does hit. Was this by chance a two-handed strike? Uh, No. Uh, it's uh so, but but three damage. Three damage. Roger that. Mm -hmm. uh, bah, 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 bah. And on his turn, uh, he backs off and gives you both a little salute and puts away his his sword and his buckler on his belt. All right. <laughs> uh, no one well I fought. That's enough for me, anyway. Don't you have a train to catch, miss? I mean, I guess technically. Who the hell are you? In general, <laughs> <laughs> close over. Well, I could tell you, but it sounds like you're in a hurry and you would waste time on adulation. I, too, am going to this train. I shall tell you there. Oh, great. tell ho yeah, uh, I'm just gonna watch, not follow immediately. <laughs> and turn to my master and be like, uh, I have no idea who that was. Did, Neither they're do a friend I, of yours? No, no, not even close, but you know it happens. It'll happen people more just, and more. People just jump into fights on the street? Mm, not in Loudwater very much, but you know, uh, it's a strange world you're about to dip your toes into. Speaking yeah, of which, well. I put in a coal. Uh, your new master will be waiting in water deep when you're ready. All right, sounds good. Thanks. Remember so much for that. Hold on, don't okay. be impatient. Remember, I'm... this person is one of the best spell swords on the coast, but they're tetchy. Hold your tongue. Your lady like a little tiny bit, just a little wee bit of decorum. That's all they ask, probably. Well, no, they'll ask more than that, but you can tell them to fuck themselves after that one. Yeah, well, I know how to handle people like that, unfortunately. I think I'll be fine. You take care of yourself. You too. Can I, like, bro-fist him a little bit? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah! Oh, big, thick, meaty old man hand. Just... <laughs> Right. And the two of you set off down the road, although I bet, uh, I believe Emery said you were staggering a little bit to let Rathgerther yeah, go first. 
Yeah, I'm like, I'm just kind of like watching from a distance being like, like judging, just like, are you trying to fuck with me? What's your deal? <laughs> Such <She's> AF. <laughs> completely oblivious. And to this, to her, this reads as you just being nervous uh, and it, because you're so impressed by her. <laughs> Wonderful. Sure. All right. And we have one last player to introduce by default. I never said my name. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's true. We jumped straight into a fight. Oh, just... my God. I'm so sorry. What? Uh, what is your character? I mean, everyone's got your character art to look at, too. So I, I didn't even remember that you didn't uh, describe yourself. No, yeah. I, like I, 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 I DM. Was... I do this for uh, not a living, but close to it. Jeep DM, let me have my moment in the sunshine. Jeez. Go for it. I'm so sorry. Go for it. <laughs> no, you're good. So so my character is, uh, you can tell she is a tiefling. She is moody. Uh, she um, is dressed a little bit like a pirate, but that's more out of just not having a lot of other clothing options. Um, She's just she got like kind of these short two horns, uh, long wavy black hair that just kind of has like a shock of white on the bangs, um, black um, sclera eyes, and just like yellow um, like irises. Looks very spooky. Um, and uh, her name is Emery. Emery Black. Did I? Oh, and she has two swords in case that was not obvious. Two swords. Two swords. Did, One sword um, and then another sword. Before I move on, in my infinite shame, did I forget anybody else for description measures? <laughs> we went through a bunch of character stuff and I got wrapped up in it. And now I realize I may have forgotten more than one person. Got wrapped up with the adventure. Mm hmm. Nobody else? Okay, good. My, my embarrassment can end here. And <laughs> For begin, now. And, and begin a new. Yeah, Jinx, uh, come on, let's get out of this house. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's go. You got a train to catch? Uh, let's. Um, we focus now on those two uh, as those two leave the scene on Maldris. Maldris, you've been living in Loudwater for uh, a couple of weeks in this inn here, and you've gotten to know some of the people well. Uh, not amazingly well, but well enough to know that you probably don't want to be in this town very much. But that's fine, because you were in here just long enough to get the news you needed. Rikori has been spotted in Waterdeep. You have a contact you have to meet that might get you the ability to go chase them down, but you have to meet them now before it's too late. Um, they are apparently uh, in uh, the gold town itself, which you have access to. Just click on your character here. Yeah, if you'd like to. I can, I will, I will open the door. There you go. Look at that. If you wish to do that sort of thing, it makes it easier when you go downstairs too. Oh, you are stuck on a light. Would you like to go downstairs? I can teleport you there. Dope. I will use my amazing DM powers once again. Uh, wah, 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 wah. Gone. It's true. Chat saying that Jinx's audio is off again. Can't hear Jinx again, huh? No problem. I will fix that in just a moment. Uh -huh. da -da -da. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, please. Let's just refresh the cache because it worked last time. Hey, our words coming through now. Uh-huh. It says R like a pirate. R like a pirate. I mean, uh, we have some, uh, we have a semi-pirate already. Here. I'm just That's dressed like one. Good. Perfect. Okay. I'm not a pirate. So, refreshing work. Perfectly. Okay. Magical. Why is it just me? That's fine. Might be your internet. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe it doesn't like that I'm also streaming. Maybe. Um. Okay. So where's the person I'm meeting? They will be in, in Gold Town. 
So you've got to head was up. You got to head up the hill into Gold Town. Okay, so I got to get out of here. Right. Oh, now I can zoom out a lot. Yeah, Am you, I did, going... you had a roof over your head. Okay. Uh, if you'd like, we can just say that you go there. You don't have to actually. Yeah, I yeah. go there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll say because so you um, you pass a bunch of people like sparring in the yard there, so you'll be a little bit ahead of them, more or less. Very okay. very flamboyant gestures, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, where is your character? I'm going to ha ha Baldur's. Um, so you have to meet them right here. You know what's funny? Yeah. We forgot my character description. <laughs> <laughs> no way. No. <laughs> Well, you're mysterious. You just said. <laughs> that, no, that's fine. You're mysterious. That that was intentional. I mean, yes. Uh, okay. So, um, I am Maldress. I uh, Mal for short. Uh, if I had any friends, they would call me Mal. Um, I am a uh, a changeling rogue. Uh, and I'm hellbent on revenge. Uh, I am wearing, or using pieces of people's faces that I liked. Like, I copied their faces. Not the so I'm like, pieces. You're just... Yeah, no, no, no. Aspects of I, people's I cop- faces. Yes. Yes, thank you. So, like, yeah. I, I came across some girl with, like, really nice eyes, so I copied that, and I, like, took some eyebrows from somebody else and took some ears from somebody else. I think I look like a... Do I look like a half-elf? Um, or an elf? Yeah, well, actually, yeah. no, I think okay. you would have ditched the pointed ears for reasons. Right, okay. So, I look like a human. Oh, there we go. More. Um... And I'm wearing, like, green robes, like, super nondescript. I have a... No, my my tunic is is green. Um... What else do I say? Yeah, I'm super, um, super androgynous. You can't tell if I'm male or female just by looking at me. And I've got short, uh, currently, like, just brown hair. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Okay. And usually prefer to have my hood up. Okay. But, like, not not covering my face, just, like, up. Okay. Like, elegantly draped. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, you managed to meet your, your contact in the pavilion just outside of where the train yard is. Uh, okay. And, uh... You don't know this person personally, but they're very highly placed in the organization. Okay. So I've never I've never met them before or I've You've never met them ne- personally before, but you know okay. of them. I know of them. Okay. Yeah. So how have you been blending in? Oh, you know. I find ways. Hmm. You're standing next to a woman uh who, who uh elf um, she likes to wear uh, no sleeves uh, to show off her arms, which are thickly tattooed and very, like, ropey in terms of their musculature. Um, okay. You know this woman to be uh, Tulu, Tulu Artigan, and she is uh, one of the top Zentarum enforcers in Loudwater. Okay. Um, uh, oh, go every- ahead. Everything about this woman looks like a predator. Like she, the way she moves is very practiced, and and uh, it looks like she is thinking about where she places every step, and she's always placing herself between someone she's interacting with and the exit, and she's like her face is sharp, and and okay. thin and angular, and her hair is always tied back severely, uh, what what little there is of it, uh, like there's enough to tie back, but not like a whole bunch. Um, okay. And she wears very, um, not like super tight clothing, but clothing that would be odd uh, for someone in her high society ranking to be wearing. It's definitely the sort of clothing you'd see on a barbarian, for instance, or a brawler. Uh, she's wearing like pants instead of a tunic, and uh, she's wearing boots instead of uh, slippers or shoes. 
Okay. Um, everything about this person just kind of gives off the signals that she could, like, hurt you really badly in a second if she needed to. And then just take off. And then just she's... take off. <laughs> she's by the exit or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and she says, well, I'm glad to see you're on the mend. The organization Thank has you. need of someone of your talents. And I won't lie, but he's been giving us some trouble lately. But you know the rules. I see. We're not allowed to step in. This has to be done by you and you alone. Of course. The only thing I can do is make sure that I send you on your way to Waterdeep properly. All right. And how am I getting there? Oh, on this new contraption. We spent a very large amount of money bribing people to make this thing work, and we had to clear out several <laughs> local tribes to make sure the train tracks were on the right areas. It was a mess. So I don't want you making the... a mess while we're on the ride, understand? Of course. I've heard the townsfolk talk about it. Everyone uh, wants it to run smoothly and properly. It should bring a great deal of money to Loudwater, provided Elbor doesn't keep running his mouth. Lord Telbor is the mayor of Loudwater, you know. Lord... Lord Telbor? Yeah. Telbor. Okay. Regardless, we should be getting ready to go soon. I'm also on this train, which reminds me, you do not know me. Understood? Yes. Break that rule and I'll throw you off the train myself. Here's your ticket. I don't doubt it. Thank you. Take the ticket. And she wanders off in, in a way that you know, like, it's, it's, she's such a weird person. It looks like she's being nonchalant, but it looks like someone who is desperately trying to pretend that they're being nonchalant. And not in, like, the dorky <laughs> sort of way, although I suppose if you didn't consider her a threat it would look a little dorky but like again everything about this woman exudes a threat and i know that she's way stronger than i am i guess uh Maybe? you can imagine she didn't get highly placed in the organization for no reason right okay so i i guess i look at the ticket quickly before uh shoving it in my pocket in a safe place right. and uh i guess i'll head to the train station? Absolutely. It is just over this direction. You see a large inn, and you can already hear there's a crowd gathered in front of the train. Okay, I will um, blend in. Maybe quickly change parts of my faces. Of my face. Nice. Quickly. Just so I have a new appearance. So, uh, yeah, Pretty so nice. I wasn't seen talking to her. I'm a new person now. Excellent. Um, and you see, in fact, all of you see. Because you have all slowly gathered in from all the areas around you, having gotten past the automaton guards very easily, and gathering with the couple of people that you have slowly gotten to know over the past couple of minutes and or not, in uh, Maldris's case, to this large crowd of townsfolk and foreigners to the town, watching as um, a man who is quite clearly a wizard in every respect, which must be Lord Telebor, who uh, whoever lives in town knows that he is a former adventurer, um, is giving a very long-winded speech, and behind him is cart after cart of this machine that none of you have ever seen before. It is vaguely reminiscent of airships. It is um, sparking in some areas, looking very dangerously so. It is creaking ever so subtly in the wind, like a like an old sailing ship. This is the chariot, and you all have your tickets rough. And we're gonna leave it there for today. Congratulations, everybody. Uh, our session zero is now complete, and Yay. everywhere it is where they need to be. So, who won? Who won? I think probably 
uh, if I had to guess who won, taxes. No! Taxes was, taxes was the winner of the Makes day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm so Absolutely. glad that those don't exist in real life. Typical Ooh. lefty, am yeah. I right? Oh, yeah. man. Yeah, what, what is this? A commie stream? Oh, my God. <laughs> um, okay, so what we're going to do now, folks, is, like I said, um, for those of you who subscribed, the VOD of this session will be immediately available on this channel. For everyone else, if you want to wait a week, you will see an edited version appearing on various YouTube channels. Hopefully edited a little bit better. As you can see, the text slowly scrolling up my face. I will hopefully have that fixed by next week, but I have no idea. I'm very bad at coding. Someone Listen, help. what is session zero for if not ironing out all of the technical difficulties? Yeah, absolutely. It's fine. Um, what we're going to do now is we are going to take a t quick 10 to 15 minute break, and we're going to come back with a little bit of table talk. So get your questions ready. And when I reintroduce you uh, again immediately after this next break, we will um, take some questions and talk about the session. See you all in a minute. Mm -hmm.